start keeping your data secure yet accessible in just a couple of moments. You should be hearing the audio stream through your computer. And if you are not able to, you can also select telephone and dial in by phone. If you feel like chatting into us, you can let us know in the question panel where you're joining us from today. And then we'll get started in just a couple of minutes. We're going to keep everybody muted on the line today except for our panelists. So hopefully people are hearing me. If you take a moment and just let me know to confirm that you're hearing me, hearing me that would be great. Paul says he's in New Jersey and weather is interesting. Yeah, we've heard a lot about um, some interesting weather <laughs> happening all over the East Coast and Southeast. Lots of places that don't normally get 16 inches of snow that are getting piled on. We hope you're all doing all right out there. Nancy in Minneapolis, thanks for letting us know you can hear. Same with Kim. We appreciate that. We're going to get started here in just a moment. I'm glad that people are able to hear. And you should be seeing my desktop as well. Okay, sounds like somebody might have just unmuted, so I'm going to make sure that everybody's on mute before we begin, and I'll go ahead and get us started here in just a second. So thank you everyone if you're just joining us. This is Keeping Your Data Secure Yet Accessible. My name is Becky Wiegand with TechSoup, and I will be your host for today's webinar. Thank you for joining us, and I'll take just a moment to do a little bit of housekeeping. If this is your first webinar using GoToWebinar, that's the platform that we're using today for this webinar, definitely take note that you have a couple of different options that you can use. You can use this little orange arrow to close the little dashboard panel on your desktop if it gets in the way of seeing anything on your screen. You can also select the mic and speakers, which is what should be automatically selected for you so that you can hear the audio through your computer speakers. If you're not hearing the audio, you can also select telephone, and that will populate with some dial-in information that you can use to participate today. We will keep all lines muted for the duration of the webinar, with the exception of our panelists today, so that we can make sure that we get a nice, clear recording to share afterwards. You can ask us questions throughout the webinar just by placing your question right here. And we have folks on the back end who will help respond to those. You just click Send when you're ready to send that, and we'll chat back with you. You can also click right here to raise your hand to let us know if you have a question or if you need help with anything. If you lose your internet connection, feel free to reconnect using the link that was emailed to you earlier this morning, about an hour ago. And if you lose your phone connection, feel free to redial with the phone number that was sent out in that reminder email. Again, your audio should be playing through your computer speakers. So we are recording this webinar today to make it available on TechSoup's website along with past webinars. You can view them at TechSoup.org slash community slash events dash webinars. As I mentioned before, you will receive a link to this presentation with the included materials and a link to the recording. If you're tweeting today's event, feel free to use the Twitter hashtag TechSoup or at TechSoup so we can chat with you. Again, my name is Becky Wiegand, and I'm an interactive events producer here at TechSoup. I've been with the organization for five and a half years as a writer, blogger, manager of our blog team, editor, and now managing the webinar program. 
prior to that, I worked for three different nonprofits in Washington, D.C. and in Oakland, California, uh, where I was the accidental techie having to come up with solutions to our day-to-day -day problems, um, even though it wasn't technically my job, as so often is the case in nonprofits. We'll also be joined by Cameron John, who is an expert with ShareFile, and he works with their product marketing team at Citrix, and also Emily Mason and Tina Larrick, who are both on staff at the nonprofit who's going to share their case study with us, Project Hope. And all of them are snowed in in various places in the southeast, so let's hope their lines stay uh, strong for us throughout the webinar. They're all joining us remotely from, from snow caves. And then we also will have on the back end, assisting with chat questions, Michael Pittman from Citrix and Ali Bazdikian from TechSoup. So feel free to let us know if you have any issues or questions, and hopefully we'll be able to respond to you throughout. For our agenda today, we'll be doing a brief introduction of TechSoup, then we'll do a quick poll to have an understanding of where you're at right now with sharing files. Cameron's going to give us an introduction to ShareFile and then give us a little bit of a demonstration of some of the features that he thinks might be most useful and interesting to nonprofits and libraries. Then we'll hear from Project Hope about how they've used ShareFile successfully and kept their data secure, yet made it accessible to each other on staff and the people they work with. And then we'll hear a little bit about the Citrix program through TechSoup and, of course, have time for your Q&A. Feel free to ask questions throughout the webinar because we will be grabbing those for you. And you know, we'll try to answer them throughout, but again, we'll also have time at the end for additional questions. So quickly, who is TechSoup? We are a 501c3 nonprofit working to connect fellow nonprofits, charities, public libraries, and foundations with tech products and services and the learning resources to use them. We've been around since 1987, and we've served a lot of organizations distributing more than 11 million software and hardware donations in more than 60 countries around the world. I'll read a little bit about our impact and some of the new things that we're doing at TechSoup. We now have consulting services available for organizations that may not have day-to-day -day tech staff. We also have um, the newest Windows 8.1 and QuickBooks 2014. So it's a great idea to check back regularly if you're interested in getting technology donations to see what we have available in our latest product catalog. And this is our homepage where you can find us at TechSoup.org. Now before we go ahead and get into this, let me go ahead and open up the real poll for you so you can take a moment and let us know what you think. Go ahead and click one of those buttons on your screen to tell us how you currently share large files. So if you have big video files, for example, or um, large PowerPoints like this presentation that you need to share, how do you currently go about sharing those? And for, for online service, we just kind of created online service as a, as a big Dropbox option because there are so many out there. But if you'd like, you can feel free to chat into us what you use just to give us an idea of kind of where you're at. And this will help our presenters tailor a little bit about uh, what they're talking about based on what you're currently using. I'm going to go ahead and close that poll. And it looks like 62% are using some kind of online service. And 31% are using email. And we have some folks saying that they use Dropbox or Huddle or Google Docs. Um, so a lot of different things out there. So thank you for taking part in that poll. With that, I'd like to go ahead and introduce Cameron John, who's going to be joining us from Citrix's Product Marketing, who is an expert in ShareFile, to talk about how you can manage your data, doing it securely, and sharing your files. So thank you so much, Cameron, for joining us. I'm glad no to have you as Thanks, part of the program. Thanks, Becky. Thanks. Well, w welcome everybody. I'm glad I'm glad to be here with you today. Um, I'm dialing in from sunny San Jose, so I feel bad for some of my East Coast colleagues and some of you guys in the audience that are snowed in. Um, but I'm based in Raleigh, and I'm 
through some stroke of luck, I ended up on, in California today. Um, but what I'm going to talk to you guys today about is how do you manage your data um, in today's organization, whether it's a nonprofit or a private sector company, we're overwhelmed by data. Um, there's tons of it floating around, and if you are in certain sectors of, of the nonprofit world where security is an issue, um, this can be mission critical. So I, I'm sure a lot of you folks in the audience have um, sensitive files, whether those are your accounting records or your client's medical records, well, whatever it may be. I'm here to talk to you guys about how we can how Citrix and Sharefile can help you guys manage, manage your data. Um, get it organized and make it easy to access and easy to use. So we brought with us um, two of our customers, Tina Larrick and Emily Mason from Project Hope, and they're going to share with you their experience about how, how and why they chose Sharefile and what they like about it. Um, and I'm just going to give you a couple of quick ideas about sort of the vision of, of Sharefile and what we can do for you at the, at the highest level, and then I'll, I'll turn it over to Tina and Emily to talk about real-world examples. So if we could move the move the slide forward. So what is Citrix? Or I'm sorry. What what is Sharefile? Um, in a nutshell, Sharefile is a much more secure version of some of those consumer file sharing services that are out there. So what I wanted to share with you guys today is why do you need to use, Why should you consider using a secure version uh, of a of a file transfer service? rather than some of the free ones that are, out, that are out there. Now, the free ones are doing interesting things, um, and they're built for specific use cases. But you got to be, if you're running um, a nonprofit, you have to be confident your data is secure. So here's a quick checklist of things you should look for when you're evaluating a file sharing tool. Um, some of you have file sharing tools in place. Some of you don't. Some of you might be looking to switch. So these are the, the probably the, the top eight things that, that separate Sharefile from the rest of the pack and things that you guys need to look at from, from your organization's perspective. So we're talking about encryption. Of course, you know, mo most of these services are encrypted, are encrypted. But if you pull back the covers and look a little bit deeper, you'll realize that, there's, that not all of them are built the same. Um, reliability and scalability, of course. Uh, but on the, on the right-hand side, it's also, it, it also has to be easy to use. So it's not just that it's super secure for the IT folks in the audience. It has to be easy to use for the end user because if it's, if it's super complex, basically no one's going to use it. They're going to go back to using their uh, their preferred solution that they've always had and comfortable with. So it has to give, it's got to be encrypted, it's got to be secure. You have to have really tight control for your admin. Um, and you got to be able to look back at the records and see who accessed what file, when, from what IP address, from what email address. So SharePoint gives you all that. It's the, it's the, the built-for-business version of file transfer. Next slide, please. So if we can drill deeper into how specifically we do that, um, the topic of mobility always comes up. We all live in a mobile world. I do. I'm on my phone all the time. I'm on my iPad all the time. I'm sure most of you guys work from wherever inspiration strikes and wherever your team needs you from. That could be an airport. You could be snowed in somewhere. It could be the beach if you're vacationing. All kinds of different places. So you want to be able to access and get work done on your mobile device. Right? It's, not, it's not enough to just have um, the ability to open up your laptop from anywhere. Well, sometimes you don't have your laptop. Sometimes you have Starbucks, and you need to open it up on your mobile device. So you've got to be sure when you're evaluating these file sharing tools that you can do things like remotely wipe the device if you, heaven forbid, leave your iPad on the subway, and your iPad has all the financial records from your nonprofit inside of it. You've got you to be confident you can remotely wipe that anytime that happens. So if you did, for example, leave your iPad on the subway, you could remotely wipe that from uh, from the Sharefile website, and everything that's stored in Sharefile would be instantly blanked off. So you, it gives you peace of mind and confidence to know that your stuff is, is secure. And then you should also look at, at best practices, things around um, passwords, like two-factor authentication, um, how easy it is how easy is it for the admin on the on your file sharing account to control it. You know, for example. Michael Pittman and I, we know each other very well. I might give him unlimited access to, to all my files that I share with him. But someone who I just met, or maybe a new partner, a new client, um, I don't know them that well, so maybe I'll just give them read access. Maybe I'll just let them download the stuff but not, not upload it. So SharePoint gives you very detailed controls on what the user can do. And then you've got to think about things like session timeouts. You've you got to make sure that um, if you have 
if you access share file from your from your mobile device, that um, that it's not just permanently open. So if you do lose your device somewhere, somebody can't just click on it and get access to all your stuff. Or you know, it, in the less if you look at it from less of a security risk standpoint, we're talking about um, kids. You know, if, if you have if you have a, a child at home and you want to let them play with your work iPad, you want to make sure that um, your file sharing account is not easily accessible with a couple of clicks. You want to make sure that there's a password on it or that you, your session times out, things like that. Because heaven forbid your three-year-old clicks a couple of buttons inside your file sharing app and he just deleted everything or he just sent it all out to the public or you know, sent it to the New York Times. So lots of things to think about on the security and the, the mobile device management world, and we can help you with all of that. So next slide, please. Yeah, and if you guys have any questions in the audience, feel free to, feel free to interrupt me. It's totally okay. Don't, don't keep your questions to the end. Um, you can raise inside of the little go to webinar endpoint, there's a little hand, and that means raise your hand. So you can either send, well, we can unmute you and you can ask the question you want, or just chat it in the window and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll take care of it. So this slide is kind of funky looking, but basically what it presents is the Dropbox problem. I know you, you, everybody's heard of Dropbox, and there's a tug of war going on in, in the private sector as well as the nonprofit world around what users want and what IT needs. So the user, users want to have easy to use file sharing. They want to share stuff with anybody. They love consumer file sharing apps like Dropbox. Um, but on the IT side and on the, on the nonprofit side, people need security. They need to know that their files are secure. They need to have the utmost control over them to make sure that only the right people are getting access to them and only for the right amount of time. And you want to make sure that there's no data leakage coming out the back door. So I, I know we have some IT-focused people in the audience today, and this should resonate. So many of you probably have Dropbox running on your network. Most likely, the people that put it on their computers didn't ask permission. They just did it because it's easy to use. So what, what we see in the share file world is a lot of data leakage. And that, that's, that, that's one of the main ways we get um, business customers that have, have left some of the more consumer file sharing tools is because they, they realize they have this, this data leakage going out the back door and they have no control and no visibility. So they've built up these, um, they've built up a very robust network of monitoring and control around their, 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 their secure data that sits on premise. But what happens if there's um, a bunch of holes in the back door? Like it, it means your IT network ends up looking like Swiss cheese and that's not secure. And as we all know, the IT manager that person's job is on the line. If there's a breach of data, that person, that person probably might be sanctioned. He, that person might even lose their job. And if we're talking about regulated industries like healthcare, for example, there's there's civil and criminal penalties involved. So, IT security gets really hairy really quick. Um, and I won't spend too much time here. But Dropbox problem, we can help you with that. Next slide, please. Um, here's a little bit deeper on the rest of the platform and what we do. And this is my last slide, and I'll turn it over to um, the folks from Project Hope. So basically, the answer to the Dropbox problem, from my perspective and the industry's perspective, is ShareFile. That's the one that, this is the one you want to go to. It, why? Because it's secure, it's easy to administer, and it is customized for the industry problems that you have or the nonprofit problems that you have. So we cover all platforms, PC, Mac, all mobile, all, all mobile platforms as well, it's business class, you can dial in access however you need it. So you can give your people access to the, mob the mobile work styles. You can enable them to work the way they want to, not just um, not just the way you choose. So with that, I, I don't know if there's another slide, but what I wanted to do is take a take a quick second and show you guys how it works rather than just talk talk to you about some ideas. Um, so Becky, if you, if you, is there another slide talking about SharePoint? I don't think there is, but if you could make me presenter, um, I'll show you guys a, two minutes on what the heck is ShareFile. Yep, you can All right. You should be. Thanks. Got it. Okay. So here you have, this is my for real ShareFile account. I live my life in here. Um, when I, I took this job almost two years ago, and I was a pretty heavy Dropbox user, and I pretty much just grabbed everything out of Dropbox and put my whole life in ShareFile. So, personal life, professional life, all my wedding photos are in here. So this is my real account. So what I wanted to show you is um, our super simple interface. There's not, there's, there's not a lot of noise in here. It's just what you need to get done. So what I wanted to show you today is the, this folder for clients. So 
I, I set this up beforehand to give you guys an idea of how easy it is to get files into SharePile, share them and collaborate with your team, and then dial in access, and um, how you can save yourself some time, some headaches, and some money. Uh, so you don't have to use things like FTP or mailing hard drives around to people or faxing things. Um, so if I open up this folder, and so you, you can make, inside of SharePile, you can make an infinite number of folders. It doesn't matter. We give you, you and your account, um, as many folders as you want. It doesn't matter. Uh, so if I was going to share this folder with my friend, Nareed, what I would do is I would talk, I would, uh, I would click here on folder access. And I see that I've already invited my friend T-Pain, um, and he has download access. I can um, I can get alerted whenever he downloads something. Whenever I can let him upload things, but maybe I also want to let him delete things because maybe I trust him and it's a it's an important project. So you can it's a very detailed way to dial in access. You can apply permissions to all the subfolders that live underneath here. Um, you can add users manually, type in an email or you can add them with a distribution group from your Active Directory system, or you can you can add people from your personal address book, your share, your address book instead of SharePile. So it, it's super easy to um, set up a folder, start collaborating, and just get your work done. So that's the folders. So if I was gonna set up a folder, super easy. And down here it shows you who's got access to what. Um, now if I was gonna upload stuff, this is something that our um, our nonprofit customers really appreciate. So if I click on here, uh, this is a Java uploader. You can drag files in here, drag and drop them. But the the, the unique, the real, the real important factor here is that it has a, it has auto resume. So what does that mean? It means if uh, if you have a client that's out in the middle of nowhere in the jungles of, of the Amazon, where where their uh, their connection speed is super slow, they can drag in you know gigabytes and gigabytes of data. And when they have a good connection, it'll it, it, it'll upload into SharePile. And when the connection drops, it'll resume. So rather than spending hours or days on a slow connection trying to upload 50 gigabytes of data, um, SharePile just does it for you. So with, there's other services out there where um, if the, the upload stream is interrupted for some reason, you're, you're stuck. You have to start all over again. Um, so if I was going to drag, let's say, how about this one? So if I was going to drag this file into SharePile, drag it, upload, and there it is. And I can start, and then I start collaborating on it. So now it's in the it's in this client folder. And if I wanted to, if I want to send it, there, there's multiple different ways you can send and share things. So you can you can send it with the um, the web application of SharePile. You can you can ask people, um, I, I want a copy of this for my record. I want to require people to log on with um, with an email and password just to make sure that somebody doesn't, um, just to make sure the wrong, that the, the files don't get into the wrong hands. So you can send things through um, through the SharePile web interface, which is important for nonprofits because it, it takes the file out of your email, out of your Outlook exchange. It sends it through the secure SharePile SMTP server, meaning your Outlook exchange servers are um, getting unburdened. So you can send it through here. Or if you want to, you can send it through um, whatever service you want. Say you don't use Outlook, you can copy this secure link, put it in Gmail, put it in Yahoo, put it wherever you want to put it. Um, so that, that's something that our, our nonprofit customers really like. Um, and I'll show you one more thing, and I'll, I'll, I'll get on to our, our featured speakers today. So unfortunately, I'm on a Mac, and we don't have an, an Outlook plugin for this on the Mac. But on the PC, there's an Outlook plugin. It sits right in here. And you can just uh, um, you just click it, and it sends your secure file that way. So forgive my messy inbox, but there's an Outlook plugin, and I wish I could show it to you right now, but um, I'm only on a, I'm only on a Mac. So one other thing that our nonprofit customers really like is the Sync Engine. So you'll see here, Bad Dropbox. I use all of them, but ShareFile Sync Engine sits right here, and it just it syncs in the background. It's super easy. You set it up. You tell it what folders you want to sync. And it just does its work. It sits right here in the background, and that's it. So, for example, if you know, if I wanted to, if I wanted to send this, you just right-click on the file, copy it to your clipboard, and then put it in your email service. So there's multiple different ways that SharePile respects your workflow, depending on we we respect the way you want to work, and we make it easier for 
for the workflow that you already have. So we don't assume you want to um, rearrange your workflow, do everything differently. We give you the tools to work the way you want to, whether it's a mobile device, desktop platform, Outlook plugins, whatever you want, we can help you with that. And with that, I will hand it back to um, our, our featured speakers today. So Becky, you can go ahead and change presenters. Thank you so much. I appreciate that, Cameron. So I'm going to go ahead and take control back of this screen. Thank you for sharing that. Really interesting stuff. We did have a couple of questions that came up, so maybe before we pass things along to um, to our folks from Project Hope to speak, um, we could address a couple of the questions that came in. So one person asked, what is FTP? Since that was on the poll, and I was remiss in not uh, defining what that is immediately, you might have a better ability to say sure. what that is than I would. So I'll, I'll let you take that one, Cameron. Sure. FTP stands for File Transfer Protocol. It's basically 30-year-old technology. So what it does is it connects um, your, your servers to someone else's servers who wants to send stuff to you. Um, the problem with FTP is it requires IT management. It, someone has to take care of it. They have to groom it. They have to clean it out. And they have to dial in access for any new client. So basically, it, it's a big pain in the butt. And we, um, we help people get rid of their or quit using FTP all the time, especially in, in the nonprofit world. Great. Um, we also have um, so a follow-up question to that. So is FTP a VPN? <laughs> Lots of little acronyms there. Um, file transfer protocol, I don't think it's the same as a, a VPN, which is a virtual private network. A virtual private network is like a secure little tunnel that you create between your laptop and your or the, the stuff that lives behind your firewall in your, in your office. Um, so FTP, the, the thing to take away is FTP and VPN, both of those are 20, 30-year-old technologies. The, the world of technology has evolved. SharePoint is leading that charge, and it's, there's, um, there's much easier ways to do things now. Great. We also had a question that came in that, you know, you mentioned if you work as a health service agency, for example, and you have client data that's regulated and you have to manage that securely, um, you know, so Barb is asking, what about HIPAA compliance? So HIPAA is the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act. I think that's maybe what it means, something like that. Barb, yeah. Uh, health, I forget what it stands for, but it's basically the super, super severe regulations that cover healthcare. They're very onerous, but Barb is asking stuff that's right in our swing zone. We, are, we fully support HIPAA compliance. We fully support technical compliance with the HIPAA security rule. Um, we have tons of collateral and websites about that. We just released, um, a, it's called the ShareFile Cloud for Healthcare. I won't spend too much time on it, but basically it's, it's a segmented enclave inside of ShareFile only for protected health information. And we, 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 we launched it a couple months ago to target our clients in the healthcare vertical. So we can help you with anything that's regulated data. Uh, we fully support HIPAA. There's another one called FINRA in the financial space. But basically, all, all our uh, all of our files, uh, all of the files that are stored in ShareFile and sent through ShareFile are they're they're encrypted at bank level encryption. Uh, when you upload them, when they're when they're resting in the ShareFile cloud, and when they're downloaded by your client. So. We take security very seriously. Uh, Citrix is a publicly traded company on the NASDAQ. We live and breathe security. We do it all day long. Great. So, you know, if you work with healthcare client or health clients or have, you know, children whose medical records you might have access to and you need to share that data, you're likely under the auspices to some degree or another to some of the HIPAA compliance requirements. So. If, you're HIP, if you need HIPAA compliance, you may already know that, but if you don't know that and you do deal with health, um, health information of your user base or your clients or your constituents from your community, then it's something definitely to pay attention to because, like uh, Cameron mentioned, you are liable for whether you are compliant or not. Um, so that's great to know. We do have um, a couple of other questions, but I'll go ahead and move us along and we'll save those for the end. Feel free to keep your questions coming in. In the meantime, we will get to all of them today. And I'd like to go ahead and bring on our next guest from Project Hope. So this is one nonprofit's experience talking about how they've managed and share, shared files. And I'd love for you, Emily and Tina, to please join us on the line and tell us a little bit about Project Hope before you jump into the share file stuff. Thanks for joining us. 
Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'm Emily Mason, um, an IT support engineer with uh, Project Hope. And uh, we are a nonprofit humanitarian health aid organization. And um, our headquarters are here in Virginia um, on the East Coast, buried under snow right now. And um, we, um, we have a, a pretty, pretty broad uh, area that we work with. We uh, have offices in over 30 countries around the world. And we uh, send medical supplies. We train doctors, nurses. We set up healthcare uh, training and education programs. Um, like I said, in over 30 countries around the world. And um, Project Hope has been around for over 50 years, actually, of a very long history. And um, and uh, that's a little bit about about Project Hope. There, um, uh, I've been with Project Hope for a, a little over five years. And um, prior to um, uh, becoming uh, customers of uh, ShareFile, we've been with ShareFile um, coming up on almost four years. Uh, we didn't have an integrated solution for um, sharing big files and managing um, transfer. Uh, and so that was a, a, a big issue. Um, and just trying to come up with a uh, consolidated solution was basically my task. And I worked with Tina. She's my, um, my supervisor, the IT director. Um, and she is on the call as well. And um, I guess my first slide is I'm going to talk about um, our individual needs that we had at the time when we looked at uh, ShareFile, um, the different options we considered, and, um, and why we went with ShareFile. And I'll, on the next slide, I'll talk about um, how ShareFile met all of our needs. Um, so like I said, we've been uh, clients of ShareFile for almost four years. Um, I think we looked at them starting in the spring of 2010, and I worked with a build rep named Jarrett and got to know him very well. And um, uh, we, we had a long list of, of issues, and uh, uh, a lot of our needs at the time were um, kind of varied based on uh, international communication and domestic with vendors and third parties. But uh, in a nutshell, we do uh, a lot of work with staff in over 30 countries. And they have unreliable and slow internet connections. In some countries, dial-up access. Um, everybody loves dial-up access. And uh, despite that, they needed to be able to send large files without having to worry about losing that download if they lost their internet connectivity. Um, we also send very large confidential financial documents. So we wanted something that is secure. Uh, we have a couple different divisions. We have the uh, Project Hope, and we also um, are also operate the Health Affairs Journal um, publication. And so we wanted something with professional-looking branding, something that made it, gave us a unified um, organizational-wide access. Uh, one of the other needs that we had was we also wanted to be able to request files from other people um, without having to create login accounts for them. Uh, or giving them too much access to, to our network. Um, we also needed to be able to maintain administrative control. So me and the IT support department, I needed to be able to support everyone um, and make sure that it had easy to use features um, so that our users aren't uploading too many files or not using the tools correctly. Um, it was crucial that it be simple and easy to use. Um, we're not um, a, an IT organization of um, a bunch of um, software programmers and developers. So we um, are global health experts, and um, we needed something that was easy for, our, for us to use so that we could get on with our work. So some of the problems that we had at the time were that our employees were using random uh, third-party freebie websites um, to send their large files, uh, whatever they could find online, um, sendbigfiles.com different things like this that I'd never heard of. And they'd have pop-up ads and banner ads. Um, so we had some pretty major security concerns. And also management. Um, some of these free sites, they were free for 30 days, and then they'd expire. So you'd have to sign up with a new account after 30 days. Um, it got kind of silly. So we were definitely looking for uh, something to get us off of that disparate uh, platform and give us something that was, was unified. Um, and email wasn't really working for us. We, we have, uh, like many organizations, an uh, email attachment size limit of about 10 megs. 
And so if you're sending big files, you, you really can't use email for that. Um, and we were doing a lot of uh, shipping, shipping CDs, shipping hard drives, trying to um, send files internationally. It was very expensive. Yeah. Long process, getting stuff through customs, sending files, receiving CDs. Um, it was a, a lengthy, time-consuming process. So uh, let's see it. On the next slide. Um, so we actually, at the time, this was um, spring of 2010, we looked at a couple of different solutions. Um, we looked at box.com, and we looked at usendit.com. And uh, I actually set up trials for our, our staff, and I said, you know, tell me which ones you like. Let's, let's look at these. Let's look at a couple different ones, and I want your feedback. Um, it was really important to me that um, this not be a solution that was um, just great as far as the IT department thought, but also the end users, the field staff, the international staff. This was something that they could actually jump on, that they could get excited about. So um, some of the ways that this has really worked for us, um, I'll give you an example, a couple of examples. Our, uh, our webmaster, she uses ShareFile quite often. She sends uh, a large video and picture files. Um, our website is nothing, nothing if not lots and lots of video and pictures of where we work and, and how our organization is impacting people around the world. She also uses that Outlook plugin that's huge with her um, because it's an easy integration. So she's in Outlook all day long. It is super easy for her to just use that Outlook plugin to send the files around. Um, as far as our field users go, uh, a lot of times they're looking for software programs that we need to send them, whether that be uh, our antivirus program or our Microsoft Office. Um, we can upload that whole program to ShareFile and then send that to everyone, and they can simultaneously download it wherever they are in the field and grab it. So this is preventing us from having to ship a CD and mail it to them or find out when uh, one of our other employees may be hopping on a plane and going to Uzbekistan the next time around. So. This is, this is very simple for us to use. Um, another example of how this has really helped us is uh, our, our uh, accounting staff uh, sending, sending QuickBooks files um, internationally. Um, using ShareFile, it cut the amount of time for our finance department to close. Um, each month, it was taking them uh, about two weeks to do financial close, and now they're closing in about six days. So this was a huge time savings for us. Uh, one of the other solutions that we really love about ShareFile is that we can request a file from a person, even if they don't have a ShareFile account. The request the file option is huge. Um, one of our employees will simply log into their ShareFile account, click a link to send uh, an email to that person. They'll receive it. They can click the link to upload the file, um, and then they get email notifications. Uh, when it's been received, it's super easy to not only send files, but receive files with this. And um, also with that is that our employees can create client accounts. So if you do want uh, client users to have a login and have uh, a restricted access, we can, our employees can create their own client accounts uh, for the third parties that they're dealing with as well. So. Um, from my aspect of it, being an IT support engineer on the back end, uh, I love the administrative uh, aspect of it. It's super easy to manage accounts. Uh, navigating the uh, web interface um, is very streamlined and very simple, um, which is one of the reasons we preferred it over box.net. Um, I felt like that interface was a little, little more clunky, a little harder for our users to, uh, to navigate compared to ShareFile. Um, and I know this was touched on earlier, but that uh, auto resume download has been uh, a huge time savings for us as well. So if our if our field users are on a dial-up connection in Uzbekistan and and they know for a fact that it's going to take a day to upload a huge file over a uh, dial-up connection because dial-up is slow, um, they know that if they start that dial-up, they can walk away and ShareFile is going to auto resume if there's any hiccups with their internet connection at all. So they don't have to start back from square one and upload the, the file all over again. So very streamlined. So that's, uh, that's a little bit about how um, 
how we've been pleased and very happy with ShareFile. Um, like I said, we've been clients with them for coming up on uh, almost four years now and very happy with the service. It's just adoption in our organization has just grown and grown. Um, and actually just this week, um, our CFO uh, approached Tina and I about using ShareFile to, um, to distribute our um, board books for our uh, board meetings that we have three times a year. Um, so we are we're finally hopefully going to go paperless with our board books uh, and distribute board materials to our board of directors with, uh, with ShareFile as opposed to uh, producing and distributing these massive board books uh, for our board meetings three times a year. That's, Great. Well, uh, thank you. Thank you so much for that, Emily. That's really helpful. Um, so how has adoption been so far at Project Hope? Have you found that the people that you're working with on staff that, you know, you mentioned one of the other tools out there was a little bit clunkier to use in the interface. Has it been adopted pretty widely by non-technical staff, too, at Project Hope? It has. It really has. Um, and I'm an IT support person, so I know FTP, but our users do not know FTP. Um, they're not familiar with it. They love the web interface. Um, they love the Outlook plugin. Um, they love being able to access it, whether it's from home or in the office, Mac or PC. The platform doesn't matter. Um, and I think because you know I got our users interested in in this from the beginning. Um, I got their feedback right out of the gate, um, and I was just pulling up one of the uh, comments that I had from from one of our. Um, communications department employees um, when I had asked her for her feedback on ShareFile when we were demoing it. And she said, hey, Emily, I just spent a little time trying out the you send it and the ShareFile site. And I have to say that I prefer ShareFile hands down. The interface is easy to use, the site is secure, and the recipient gets an easy to read and easy to follow email when the file is available. And the download time of my file was just mere seconds. So she said, thank you. That's great. That's really helpful to know. Um, so Miguel asks, um, can you collaborate file, like uh, can you collaborate on one file having multiple users look at it at the same time? Or is it really just meant for that delivery for large files? Uh, we, do, we do collaborate as well. We can create root level folders um, to where multiple users can um, upload and uh, download files and, and communicate in specific folders that are relevant to a topic. Um, I've not had any experience of two users being in the same file at the same time. Um, I would say there's probably not too many platforms that would allow that, um, just from an IT perspective. Um, and we do, we do have, uh, and you can set time limits on your files. So, um, for instance, in our case, we set um, 90 days as the uh, quota for our files in their file boxes. Um, but that is absolutely adjustable um, depending on what your needs are. So in our case, um, we're not using it for long-term storage. Um, we, we have our file servers and our backup systems for that. Um, so in our case, we're using it for some short-term collaboration and for um, directional transfer, either sending and receiving. Okay, that's helpful. And then um, you mentioned how you know the backend admin is really easy to use, and so you have one admin account. And then about how many users are using that um, to share files with one another? Like how many people on your staff do you think are actually using that account, or do you need separate accounts for each of them? Um, in our case, we actually have four admin accounts for IT staff, so that everybody can get in and, and manage it. So there's about four IT staff that will do it. Um, and then as far as employees using the system, um, we went ahead and purchased uh, licenses for everybody. We wanted everyone in our organization to be able to use this. Um, we didn't want people to have to share logons or uh, find somebody who has an account. We, we wanted everyone in our company to, to kind of have a, a, a take on this platform. And so we have, um, we created probably about 200 accounts. Um, if I had to guess, um, and we've probably got maybe 75 people um, using that. Um, it's going to depend on the employee's role, for sure. Um, we have people who are using ShareFile every day, 
uh, 20 times a day. <laughs> and then we have people who are using it uh, once a quarter to send financial documents. Um, and then we've got people who um, are stumbling across it and, oh, this is great, didn't know we had this. Um, and so the, the range depends, um, probably primarily based on the employee's role in the organization and, and what their needs are. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, so Cameron, actually, if I could bring you back on the line just for a second to kind of uh, piggyback onto the account question. So, you know, Emily mentioned that she's got four admin accounts and then they, they've set up access for 200 other users who are within the organization. Um, how does that work? Not necessarily like how to actually set it up, but how does that work within, um, you know, say, uh, you know, like if you have one admin account, is, does everybody have to use that login if you're wanting just a small group of people, three or four staff, to have access to it? Or do you have to purchase separate accounts for each person? Or how does that work? No, not at all. Uh, we, we've thought this through very carefully for situations just like this. So if you have, so you can give anybody inside the account admin access. So if, if, I have an, if I'm the admin on my account, I just bought one, but I need to give, it, I need to give admin access to my CFO or my administrative assistant, whoever that is. You can give anybody you want administrative rights to your shared file account. So it's super easy to administer. Um, the admin just sets the prison admin tab inside of their share file account, and inside of there, you can give detailed access to whoever you want. So if you have internal people that need full admin access, that's great, easy to do. And if you have a bunch of people in the field who just need to upload stuff or to send stuff to you, but they don't need to you know, create new passwords or create new accounts, all that stuff, then you just, you just turn it off for them. Great. Sounds Sounds kind of dreamy. Um, so before we take a few more questions, I'm going to go ahead and quickly advance through some slides just to talk about the Citrix program here at TechSoup for anybody who might be interested in it. So TechSoup and Citrix has um, joined to present this special discount program for eligible U.S. nonprofits, charities, and public libraries. There are a variety of project products available in the Citrix discount program from go to my PC, go to meeting, go to training, go to webinar. We have a question about kind of how those sync up, and so we'll get to that in just a moment. Um, and also share file. You can learn more about the donation or the, the discount program at TechSoup.org slash Citrix. And if you're not registered, it's a good idea to do that so you can access discounts and donations from a variety of different product vendors, um, you know, like Citrix. And there's information about those restrictions on your screen at TechSoup.org slash restrictions pound Citrix. And um, basically, organizations that have a budget of less than, I believe, $10 million can access the discount through Citrix, through the TechSoup program. And that enables you to get ShareFile. You pay a $10 admin fee to TechSoup, and that's basically a small fee to help us administer programs like this webinar today and also to administer the validation services that we do to ensure that uh, only eligible organizations can receive the donations and discounts through our site. So that $10 admin fee gets you access to the discounted rates and ShareFile's discounted rate through TechSoup is 50% off of the retail price, um, which I believe is about $360 for the year for an annual subscription, and that's um, for the life of the program. So you only need to access that once to then get that subscription on an annual basis. Um, so that's a little bit of information about how to get the program. If you have other questions, feel free to type them in the chat window, and I'll just go ahead and move us forward to a couple of other ones that we had come in. Um, so Cameron, here's a question for you about how we know ShareFile is a fairly new addition to the Citrix family of products. So how does it integrate with um, other Citrix products like conferencing and collaboration, like GoToMeeting or even GoToWebinar, the program we're using today? Is there any integration features? Of course there is. Yeah, so ShareFile has been in the Citrix family for about two years, I think. Um, so we get, we get asked about integrations all the time, and um, we're, we're certainly doing more. but. Right now, the way ShareFile integrates with the collaboration product, um, right now, so inside of GoToWebinar, if you select, um, like we're, we're recording this, right? So 
I want to be able to send that huge video file out to all of you attendees. So if I was going to set this webinar up, you, you, could, you can make the, the webinar recording save automatically into your ShareFile account. You, you pick which one ahead of time. And then after the webinar, you just uh, right-click on that file, or it, it'll be in your, the, share, the web interface in ShareFile, and then you can send it securely. Um, so you can send up to 10 gigabytes securely with one, with one link. But it, it's not just that, that you can send the link. You can then track who uses it. So if you wanted to do this for marketing purposes, you could require, it, it could be a lead generation tool. You could require people to put their name and email in um, and then before they get access to the download. So it, it's not only um, access for your, your, your community or your clients, but you can also use it for a, a marketing tool. So that's go to meeting, go to webinar. Um, uh, the, the other cool thing that I like about ShareFile plus go to meeting on the, the iPad app, some of you guys might already have go to meeting on your iPad. Um, there is a button inside of the, once you have GoToMeeting up, there's a uh, share with button, right? You click it and you can share files with share, from ShareFile, push them directly through ShareFile while you're inside of GoToMeeting. So there's, there's pretty deep integrations with the collaboration products. Now ShareFile also integrates with um, things like Podio, which is our, our project management platform which is really cool, and it's great for the nonprofit world because I think you can use, you get up to five seats for free. Um, so you can go try that one out, audio.com. Um, but, but ShareFile is such an integral part of the, the Citrix portfolio these days that it also now integrates with Zen Desktop, Zen App, um, Zen Mobile, and Citrix Receiver. So a, a lot of that is product jargon, but anybody that has those products, you guys know what I'm talking about there, very large enterprise size deployments of uh, virtualized desktops. So ShareFile is um, pretty deeply integrated into the, the whole portfolio, but we'll be doing more integrations as time goes on. That's great. Um, so we have a couple of other questions that came in. So we have this, this question from Nancy who writes in that we are a very small nonprofit. We're in a transition process and we've been using Quicken and just purchased QuickBooks. Um, we just purchased a building and now have part-time staff, so they're really a, a small but building and growing nonprofit. Um, she's the treasurer and she works mostly from home. She does most of her input from home and would like to produce reports from the office. Um, is this something that this product would be able to help her do? So if she's producing stuff at home and they're big reports, could she be using this to sort of access between home and office or sharing them with an accountant who's off-site or with the other staff person off-site? Does this seem like a product that might be good for them? And she says, we have no servers, just laptops. Perfect. Okay. Well, one, you don't need any servers. Don't worry about that. Uh, but there's two ways to answer that, and both of them are yes. The first one is, Nancy, we, uh, ShareFile integrates with, with QuickBooks, so you can, you can sync your QuickBooks files um, up and down into the ShareFile cloud and then send them through that web portal or your Outlook plugin if you want to. Um, the other way to do it, it we have a, a product called GoToMyPC, which is the industry-leading remote access tool. So it creates a, um, a secure little tunnel into your, the, the, the computer that lives in your office. So if you, if you wanted to access that from your, your laptop at home or your mobile device on the train, wherever the heck you are, you can use GoToMyPC to get into the, the computer that lives in your office. So you can do it uh, using the cloud with ShareFile, or you can do it using the, the hardware that you already have. So the, your office PC plus your, your laptop that stays at home. Terrific. Very handy stuff. So we have a couple of other questions. So Graham asks, um, can users collaborate concurrently? So not can they synchronously edit um, something like a Word or an Excel file? That's a great question, Graham. Um, we don't have that in SharePoint right now, but we are building it this year. So right now, all you can do is preview a document, like pr bring it up and look at it. You can't edit it. Um, so I, I think what Graham's asking about is sort of Google Docs style. Uh, four people edit the same document at the same time. We don't have that, but we're, we're building towards it. Now, that said, you could use Google Documents um, to do your collaboration in real time, and then you could send it via SharePoint so that it's secure and that, um, so that you can track access to it and use it for marketing purposes if you want. Great. And he also asked, do you support file revisions and restoring deleted files? Like is there a way to roll back if you've yeah. changed something or deleted something by accident? Yeah, we have um, 
unlimited version, it's called versioning, so you can get access to any of the other versions of it. So, you know, if, it, it, if Nancy and I are working on a document, maybe it's a long contract, I save my changes in the share file, she saves her changes, both of those documents have the same title, so what happens? Uh, don't worry about it, we, we take care of all that. So if you want to look back at yesterday's version or two hours ago version, it, it's all there. Terrific. So we also have a question um, from Paul who asks, is there a limit to the number of users based on the license? Um, no. So you pay for a plan. It could be two people or ten people or twenty people. So those are the people that you would, in theory, give admin access to or not. And then so, so think of those as like the, the people inside your, inside your organization that need um, that need pretty deep access to share files. So those are your internal people, and those are the people that you pay for. Uh, when you're collaborating externally with your clients or prospects or new partners that you're trying to sign up, whatever those may be, we give you an unlimited amount of external collaborators. So we, we encourage you to share. We want you to collaborate with people outside your organization. And so, for example, if you, uh, if you send a file or a folder to someone who's not in your organization, they don't need a share file account to access that file or folder. They can just click on the link and get whatever it is you sent for them. Great. So we also have, I'm going to just hop back to a slide here. Sorry, you're sh seeing some of my screen back here. That's way back in the slides. I wanted to show really quickly. So TechSoup's share file account um, discount rate is actually, I think, limited to 10 users. Um, and I think that's for those maybe 10 like admin level or, or internal users that you'd want to have access to or give access to. So keep that in mind. If you need 200 licenses, then you may need to go through a different route to get that through Citrix. Um, so just keep that in mind when you're looking at the, the details on this system, on this page on our site that has all of the details. You can look at the description the system requirements, and the rules and eligibility restrictions, just to make sure that it meets your needs. We also have a question in these last few minutes. We have um, a question asking, how many levels of admin can you have? Can you have somebody who's like the head office, a country office, a branch? Can each manage their own users, um, yet globally manage the rights of those users? How much permission yeah. and role playing can there be? <laughs> you can play as many roles as you want. So in, in ShareFile speak, what you're talking about is something called a super user. So there, there's usually only a handful of admins on the account. That's the person with the power to turn off the account or pay the bill or do, you know, turn off ShareFile or turn it back on. Um, a super user is kind of what you're describing. Country manager, but that person needs to set up their team with ShareFile seats. Um, head office type people. So yes, you can do that too. And if, if you do pursue ShareFile, it's something called super user, so when we give you that uh, customized training for you and your team, ask them about super users, because that's what that is. Great. Super user sounds like a fun title. I'd like that printed that's on a plaque, please. <laughs> yeah, it does. I <laughs> like it better. Like video games. <laughs> it's true. Um, so we have just a couple of minutes left, so I'll take a couple of other questions quickly, and then we'll wrap up. Um, we have a question around disaster response. So for all those people who are snowed in today and can't get around, um, how, can you talk a little bit about how ShareFile can be used um, to help keep your organization moving along even if you're in crisis mode and some big disaster or emergency has taken place? Um, yeah. Any examples of how ShareFile can come in handy for that? Sure. Um, we get this all the time, especially from our client, from our customers who you know, maybe they're in a very it's a very snowy part of the world or um, disaster prone part of the world. So, two things: we we have a, a package called the Total Mobile, the Totally Mobile Office, or the the Paperless Office, and it gives you ShareFile Plus Go to My PC, which is that remote access thing that I talked about. So basically, what you would do is you'd store your organization's files, every last one of them, inside ShareFile, and, and then everybody who needs access to it can get access to it. So whether you're your West Coast office is having a drought, but your East Coast office is closed due to snow. Everybody can get access wherever they are. Um, or your, your field teams, maybe they're in a disaster-stricken part of the world. Maybe we're talking about you know, the, the floods after the Fukushima disaster in Japan. You can, people can still get access. As long as they have an internet connection, they can always have access to their ShareFile account. Uh, 
So you and you can also use go to, uh, the go to my PC tool for accessing your computer that lives behind your office, or sorry, that lives behind your firewall. So we That's get this great. question all the time, and when when frankly, whenever there's bad weather, uh, we get a lot more business because <laughs> this is what we're built for. Yeah, people realize, like, oh, man. Well, and, you know, at TechSoup, we have quite a few resources on, on ensuring that people can, organizations can provide continuous service through disasters. Many of the organizations that work with us uh, provide, you know, immediate disaster response and help in emergencies and things like that. So we want to make sure that they can stay up and running. So we always recommend the two-by-two-by-two by two by two rule, where you've got two copies of important critical systems or documents in two different locations with two different people. So multiple people having access to them. So one in the cloud maybe, or one with share file, one with a desktop, or one in a backup disk. And that you're making sure that you've got that uh, duplicate, uh, hap, you know, duplicate preparation in advance of a disaster. So this is great that it makes it available. I pulled up this screen one more time just because I wanted to make sure that people are aware that through TechSoup.org slash Citrix, you can find GoToMyPC, which was mentioned just a moment ago by Cameron, in addition to GoToMeeting, GoToTraining, GoToWebinar, and ShareFile through the Citrix program. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap us up here because we are through with all of our content for today. So thank you so much to everybody who joined us. Uh, you will get a follow-up email later on today, or possibly tomorrow, depending on how quickly I can get it out, um, with the recording of today's webinar and links to the resources discussed and the slide deck. So thank you so much to our webinar sponsor, Citrix, who helped provide the platform for us to present this webinar today. And thank you so much to Cameron, Emily, and Tina for helping uh, present to us about their experiences with ShareFile. And also thank you to Ali on the back end who helped answer questions and help you with any technical issues. We appreciate you joining us. So please take a moment and complete the post-event survey once our screen is closed so that we can continue to improve our programs. We offer webinars on a weekly basis through TechSoup, so feel free to join us again. And we hope to have you join us next week. Have a great day and stay warm. Bye-bye. Thanks, guys.